Welcome to this modding tutorial for Battle Trauma. Timestamps have been added for your convenience. First, do the same as any other mod. Create a folder for it and place the sprite inside such folder. Speaking of sprites, let's take a look at it. First, make the limbs for your creature. The more pieces, the more fluid you can make move. Also, make sure there is ample space in between each limb. This will be important for later. Another note is that you can make them completely horizontal or vertical. In the editor, we'll add inclination. Finally, to connect your pieces, you got two options. Either make the ends fade so they mix better, or make the ends match in color so they blend naturally. Now, let's head over to the editor. To start a new creature, click right here and start filling the details that they ask. If this creature is going to be part of one of your already existing mods, then make sure that you select such mod as part of that package. If not, then just create a new mod. Now, I was going to go in depth of details of every single property, but as it turns out, there is a lot of redundancy, and mostly it's very intuitive, so it wasn't necessary. However, I will still relate important bits. For example, this box opens additional windows, and some hidden stuff. This one selects which window is opened by parameters from the previous box, and finally, this small section here will allow you to bring your creature to life. Keep in mind that when you open the parameter windows, it will overlap all of these buttons, so you'll have to close it by clicking on this box again. If you plan on making multiple creatures, get used to the hotkeys, as they will help you speed up your process. Let's begin with creating the limbs for your creature. I would recommend you to first freeze everything, just so you don't have the engine trained to interact with anything just yet. Click on Sprite Sheet to open your texture file, and head over to Create limb. Then, on the spreadsheet, click and drag until you have made a box surrounding one of the pieces. Do this for each and every limb. This is why it's important to keep a good distance in between one another. After, or even during that process, you can edit in parameters the name and what kind of limb it is. The latter is the most important, as it will tell the game how it should behave when doing animations. One thing to note while editing the limbs properties is that you must check the depth. Take this base for example. The closest to the screen it is, the more to the right side, while the further, or deeper, is the left. Use this to know the value to give to each limb's depth. Usually, the torso will always be 0.5, in other words, this means in the center, while right will go to the ranges of 0.3 to 0.4, this by extension could lead to the left being 0.6 or 0.7. This is not law, however, and it's best if you choose values that make sense to you. Once this is complete, it's time to move to... Joints. I'm not going to lie, this is the reason why the video took so damn long to make. They make no sense! However, I figured out enough to help you make your own creature. First, select the limb that you want to connect. Then, click on Create Limb. Finally, join the said limb with the next one. This is a chain effect, which means if you click on Create Limbs again, your last join the one that is selected now. For example, select the torso and then start stitching all of the way down to the hand. By now, you probably want to unfreeze your creature, but this is probably going to happen. To change this, let's go for a second to animation and change both head position and torso position to make a fitting height. So far so good, but we want to make the arms move, legs twist and tails flail. For that, we're going to need to change the min and max angles and this is where I'm completely lost. I have no f 
an idea of what they do exactly, other than controlling the limits on how each limb can move. My best advice is to look for an already existing creature in the game and check for their values. Use those and start applying them and tweaking them until you get something that you like. Sadly, there is not much else I can add as I am not exactly sure how any of this system works. After all of this is done, you'll want to check the animations. You'll mostly change the speed and step sizes, but don't be afraid to look at and change other values as you see fit, to make your creature look more alive and customized. Now it's time for detailing your creature. On the character parameters, you'll change the health, blood sprites, behavior, sounds, etc. Sprites are a topic for another video, but don't you worry, there is a good sprite sheet on all the IDs that you can use. If I can find it, I'll probably post it here on the video while I'm editing. Let's go over to some important notes. If your limbs look too big in game, head over to the ragdoll and change both limb and joint scale until the size of is the one that you imagine. Not changing both can lead to some fun results, but probably not wanted ones, except for Chunky Mud Raptor. This one is not a mistake. To handle your creature's IQ point, in character's property, look for AI at the end, and you can find a target. As you can probably guess, it handles the creature's ability to recognize threat, prey, food, etc. From here, you can add targets to your heart's content using the other creature's ID on the tag. It's good practice to always have decoy as the max priority target, as it's the advantage players have when going against overwhelming odds. There are also hidden tags that you can use, like stronger, weaker, and provocative. These are handled by some of the values from AI. To make an attack, you first select the limb you want to add it to. You can have multiple limbs having an attack value. The target force to limb uses the limb's ID, which is a number applied automatically on the order of the limb's creation. You can check it when you click on the limb and go to its parameters. If you want to add weak or armor points to your creature, you'll have to add a damage modifier by selecting the limb, going into its properties and adding a damage modifier. Armor points are just like normal limbs, but overlaid on the fleshy ones. Make sure that the collider is bigger to ensure that they will get hit first. Also, since they are directly joined to a limb, they don't need any unique min-max angles on the joint. Just a stiff one that gives it its direction. Also, for armor points, you're probably gonna want them to break. You can do that in this section. Now your creature is done, and it's ready to be implemented into the game. However, to do this, you must add an in-game event. An event is how it controls spawns and populations. Without an event, your creature will only be spawned through console. Events are only XML files, so let's hop over there. Luckily for all of us, events have quite a good documentation on what everything does, so I don't need to speak much. Just head over to your contents folder in Battle Trauma and opens the random event XML. You'll have this section, which will give you all the insight you need to understand random events. I'll still, however, do a small introduction on what you can do on your own event. In your own modes folder, create a random events XML. Inside of it, make a random events block, and inside of it, add an event set block. Tweak the difficulty at which you want your event to happen, and add another event set, this time to control when your creature will spawn. To explain the intensity of it, basically, if there is a lot going on on screen, like for example your ship is sinking and is utterly broken, or have an ongoing wave, etc., the game will have high intensity. If the current intensity is not within the whatever range you set, your event will not happen. Finally, just add the type of event, in case of this tutorial, a creature event, to happen when the conditions have been met. Once you're done with all of the event blocks, head over to your file list and add your random events.xml to the lot list. And you are set! You just made your creature and added it to the game. With that, the creature tutorial is done. I know this took... HOLY f
Did three months pass? So, yeah. But I do plan on finishing this tutorial series soon though. So stay tuned if you want to learn more about how to make mods in Battle Trump. And don't forget to share the video with whoever you think is interested. Next one on the list is Particles. Hope this has helped you. I'll see you there. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing for similar content. Have a fantastic day.